<laughs> Hi, and welcome. Today is Saturday, the 10th of March, 2018. And this is the Saturday Hukalo webinar with our very wonderful channel, Jim Charles. My name is Karen Newman. I'm your host. In our room today, we have Sheer, Selesh, Marlene, Mark, Liney, Ian, Ava, Christine, and Barbara. And who do you have in your room, Jim? I have John, I have Angie, I have Karen, I have Will, and I have Ray. All right. Back to the whole <laughs> room over there. That's how yes. we sit. Yeah. Um, just before we get started, just to let you know that this is the Hukalo paid webinar. Um, you can become a member of Human Colony if you go to hukalo.org and then you sign up to be a paid member, which lets you into all of the paid webinars. It's for $10 a month and you get access to be in the room with Jim every time we do one of his webinars. And then also too, coming up, we have some new a new class coming up. It's Galactic Reiki. It's starting on the 7th of April. It's the April 7th and 8th, 2018. And it's level one and two. It's taught by Takur, and it will cover the spirals and non-spiral symbols. It's one hundred dollars for two days and six hours of classes. And you can go to hukalo.org, and under the uh, events, there is the Correct. sign up for Galactic Reiki. So, and it's from six thirty p.m. to nine thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the reason why we made it later is so that the people from Australia. Japan and New Zealand can also join in because that's early in the morning for the next day. So oh. like, uh, so uh, there was a lot of requests from Australia, especially for the Galactic Reiki. And so we made it the time so that um, Americans and all those people in the other side of the world can join in. Unfortunately, it's not a good time frame for Europe or that area, but we will do it again probably and make another time setting, so. Yeah, it, and there's a question in the chat asking from Celeste, will there be replays? Will it will be filmed? Can you, can you watch it in replay or not? Um, the people that are in the class job, will get a copy of it. Okay. But the people that are hey. not in the class should, will not <laughs> Okay. All right. And a certificate. There is a certification at the end. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're going to start with the blessing. And Jim will be starting, I mean, Will will be starting with the blessing. Yay, okay, come on. We watch you as wave after wave of information comes, after wave after wave of dis, uh, illusionment comes as well. There are many things happening all at once on your planet, and you must be aware of all of it, because you cannot be distracted from your way, from your purpose, and from the things that God wants for you, and the, the goal of enlightenment for the earth. All right, very good. Wow. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're ready whenever you're ready. No, I was just gonna oh. say we're ready whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay, very good. I will, um, I know that um, Elijah's coming first, but anybody else can come after that. Um, there were several requests before we even went live of different people, and I can't even remember them all. But of uh, course, they're here, they're here. So shall I, read, shall I read out the list for you of who was requested? Uh, actually, yeah, if you want to read out the list to see, uh, to let everybody know who, who has been requested. Okay, the requests were the Dream Lords, Takur, the Ra'ans, 
the collective of uh, the Ra'an's collective, sorry, um, Bod Bodicia or Bod Bodicea, Gaia, the Telosians, and El Yaha, also Grindel. All right, very good. Well, we know that Elijah is coming first, so yeah. I will um, I will bring Elijah to you now. Okay, great. Have a wonderful session, everybody. Great, and you have your water there? I have water, coffee, and I drank <laughs> the soda, so that's gone. All right, perfect. So. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you when you get back. All right, very good. Greetings, I am Elijah. It's good to see all of you here today. Today I would like to focus on something that is very important to me. There are many things out there to listen to and to be distracted by on the web. As the prayer person had said, we need to be focused on the goal, on the on the things that you need to be doing in this lifetime and it's very easy to get distracted one of those distractions is that there is many people saying that you're going to be turning into light very shortly now what does soon mean to these people what is soon and why would you be turning into light if you have missions to be done and to be upholding light for many things. Do you believe that the light is coming so quickly that it will raise the entire population at an, an amazing level of speed? Let me tell you this. There are many conspiracy theories and things to take your minds off of your missions and mind take your minds away from uh, meditation and take your minds away from positivity as it were but you must stay greater than that you must be stronger than that put your faith above your fears put your love above those things that seem to be distracting you must focus yourself into a, an area that is absolute for you. If even it is to become more of who you are, if it is just to become a greater inspiration or be more fulfilled and more enlightened, that is something to look forward to, something to be and do that is far better than these distractions that are all around. The enemy wants to be a distraction to you so that you will not reach your goals, so that you will not find that which you are supposed to do, which find things that will keep your interest away from taking your uh, goals to a higher level, your meditations to a higher level. Now, I'm not saying all of you are involved in these things, but many are involved in trying to move to the next level trying to hit that next density and they're excited because they are going to be moving into another density. But keep in mind, if you are born into the third density and you have a mission to accomplish, you are not going to rise until that mission is done, no matter how hard you try. And remember also this, in order to move to that next density, you have to be totally dedicated to God. You have to be in line with it, that purpose and that density. You must know exactly what is necessary 
to be done to do such a thing. And not all of you and many, many people do not even know what is required of them to do this. They just believe a wave of, of uh, great energy will come and it will happen. But the earth is not ready for this. And the word soon is very relative. In God's eyes, a million years is soon. In the eyes of those in the oversoul, a hundred years may be soon, or even 10 or 20. What is soon? Soon in the eyes of eternity is but a very small peace. And so if you're expecting within a year or a month or a, or a short period of time this to happen and that everyone will become in line with this particular energy of, uh, of moving forward into the next density, please be aware that the earth is not ready for this at this time. There may be some people that are, that their missions are complete, that they are ready to move on, that they are ready to translate, if you will, into a greater dimension, but do not be deceived and stop all your work waiting for this to happen because you might be surprised that it will not happen as soon as you think. Do your work, align yourself with eternity, with God, with his missions and with the light and you will translate at the right time, but you should not stop and wait. That is not the right thing to do. You should move forward in your work and try to give as much light as possible to the world so they can get ready for this. I am not saying it will never happen. And I am not saying that it is not true that there is uh, another dimension that you can move to. And I'm not saying that it is uh, impossible to do that. But what I am saying is the world as a whole is not ready for it. The world as a whole is still searching for the light, still searching for answers, still searching for this alignment with God that will help you move and translate into this next area of in this next dimensional area you were born into third dimension to do a work were you not before all these conspiracy theories and negativities and things about moving into the next dimension uh were mentioned were you not set on trying to do a goal now there are some of you out there going well i might as well move to the next dimension because i do not see that I have anything to do. I do not have a goal as of yet. I do not see a purpose for my life. But that does not mean that there is not one. It just means you're not aligned to it yet. And that is another thing. If you do not have a purpose, you must find it. You must align with it. If it is nothing more than keeping the light stable, on the planet, if it's nothing more than being the example of God that he has made you in a you very unique way so that others can see his light in a different way than they had before, that is important. That is something to move forward with. That is something to seek. But I am sitting here and the people around me in this room all have purposes, all have goals, all have healing energies, all have things that they need to do before they translate into another dimension. And some of these people may not even have been aware that there was so much talk about that, but because they were more focused on their missions, which is good. But there are many out there saying, soon, Soon you will translate into the new dimension. Soon you will become light and you will move forward. It is true that moving forward is necessary, but to translate into the next uh, dimension is not possible at this time, not for everyone. 
not for everyone. And I know that there will be questions out there, and I am willing to answer them. And I, I do not want to be negative about this because this is not a negative focus. I want you to focus on your missions to bring the world into a greater place, to bring the world into a higher light, to align yourself so these things can happen, but you cannot do it too soon. Because if you stop your missions and look for translation into a new dimension too soon, then your mission is defunct. And that is what some things, some people are trying to do is stop these missions by giving you these false hopes about translating too soon. Please do not fall into this category because I want you all to be fulfilled in the way that you are supposed to be fulfilled. I know that this is impossible for every single person to be fulfilled. I wish it was possible and I wish everyone would stay away from distractions, but there are so many out there that you may be taken in by one. But remember this, you can always resonate with it and know if you are going in the right direction. If you pray, if you meditate, if you understand what God really wants for your life, you will know what to do because he will bring you out of that in a way that is miraculous in some ways because you don't know any better than to follow this perhaps. But I will answer some questions about this for you, if there are any out there. If there are none, we will move on to the next person. I don't see any questions at the moment, but perhaps in your room. Is there any questions? Or did I there not? Is. Yes, Can continue. Elijah, last night, was it you that I was talking with and working with? Yes, you worked All with right. me very much. Right. Yes. Thank you, and thank you for the healing. You're welcome. That is all. Is there anything else, or should I just move for on? Sheer does because have I have missions as well. <laughs> Sheer has a question. Yes, Sheer. Hello, Elijah. How are you? I am very well. Well, it seemed that yesterday there was some kind of an attack on Earth, and certain people moved to different timelines. So I'm wondering which timelines a timeline are we at right now? It depends on the individual. There, there was reasons why people were moved to different timelines yesterday, and it was for one for protective reason reasonings, and two for energetic reasonings. And as the timelines are getting back into order, you know that there was some uh, things that were not right about the timelines that they had to repair. And as they are repairing them, certain people have to be moved here and there so that they, they can repair it properly and get things in the the right, uh, exactly the right way that they were. And that's millions of details. And so moving around to the timelines right now for some of you is just um, a little bit arbitrary because they're just doing some uh, <laughs> fixing and they're doing some repairs. Okay, and do you have an estimation? The attack, the attack was an energy attack. A porthole opened over the United States. Energy beings were released into uh, into the earth. And many people, I, I've heard many people talk about it already. It was a very short attack, of course. They've got, the men in black and uh, security around the world was uh, notified. They've traveled very quickly and we were able to, they were there to disrupt energies of all kind. If your electronic equipment was not working properly yesterday, this is, uh, this is why it was, they were there for about maybe 10 hours during the day, but they were um, gathered up and the porthole was sealed and everything is back to normal today. They, but it was a surprise attack. And energy was dispersed in many places around the world. Uh, and you you find these 
kinds of attack to be like almost um, cartoon like in the sense that you no one can see anything, but yet the they you can feel movement and action and and there are things happening around you. So uh, I had many reports, or I should say Jim had many reports that there were all kinds of movement and actions yesterday that were un, unpredictable. So, and this was the energy attack, but it is over and they have been contained. I see, and do you have any estimation when the timelines are going to be fixed or? That I cannot tell you. Only the Time Lords would be able to tell you exactly when that would happen. But I, from my understanding, they are well on their way and will be fixed shortly. <laughs> Here, there's that word soon again. But um, they they said that they will be fixed within a, a few weeks, no later. Okay. Thank you very very much. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. You, no one can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry that I'm making you move. That's but. okay. Um, there was a second group of beings that also came through that were a second. Um, uh, Actually, there was three different uh, sets of energy. They all came through at once, but they were not all in the same place. So you experienced two attacks, but they were two different uh, sets of energy beings. But there was actually three sets of energy beings that were that came through the porthole. That did, They just didn't attack the same places at the same time. Thank you. Okay. Is Christine, there any other questions? Yes, we have three more questions. Christine, Liney, and then Ava. Very well. Oh, Christine, no, she doesn't have a question. Sorry, let's start with Liney then. Liney and then Ava. Liney. Hi, Elijah. Greetings. Hello. Um, actually, um, first of all, did, did you like my picture? Did you see my picture I drew? Yes, it was amazing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, um, you're talking about the like the fourth dimension. Um, and obviously. Um, I'm guessing you know that my um, move has been approved by God. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule. But as a whole, the whole population is not moving to the next dimension. There will be certain people that will be approved to move for reasons of work, that they need to, to get things done and they need to uh, do work in these areas. And approval has been given for some. But I am talking about those that are speaking about the entire populations or portions of the population that will rise out of third dimension suddenly and, and translate into the next dimension. Now, some would call this the rapture. Um, the rapture is not looked at in this way exactly, but there are those that are ready to translate and Perhaps one day will there will be a rapture-like experience, but it is not ready to happen quite yet. Okay, um, e Elijah, so I have a slight yes. confliction. So obviously, um, my thing had been approved, but so, so yes. why was why was I um, born into the third dimension anyway? Did I have an original mission or? Yes. Or? You have two children who are gifted, and you must have you must be into the third dimension in order to have those children so that they can be part of the, the future missions. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Yes, there are reasons for for being born into the third dimension. Absolutely. And some missions may take a few of you out of the third dimension. And some of you will be out of the third dimension shortly and then come back. So do not, uh, but some will be per permanently out and some will not. But it is uh, as God wishes. But I am telling you that these uh, talking of, 
of within a month or two weeks or a year that all that a group of people will disappear this is not possible at this time what else what other questions are there uh, eva has a question eva greetings elijah um i have two questions one is can you see this picture this was taken um by my daughter chloe in yes. the trip to workshops in sedona it's been these beings uh, one picture is even seven beings um were surrounding her through entire trip who are they they're just friends of hers from other areas they are alien beings as well so she is just very protected and they do not wish to tell you who they really are, but they uh, there is a couple of those beings that are actually of angelic origin. Okay, thank you so much. My second question is about our current president, Donald Trump. I have been hearing a lot of negat negative things he's doing uh, in environment, um, healthcare, whatever, social things. Uh, you can think of but also i've been hearing that he's cleaning up cabal removing them is that true what's true the truth is that all the things that he is doing are awakening people and all the things that he is doing is not from this thought process from third dimension so he is working in a in a different realm and he does not care what people think of him but he has to bring change to the world in some way. And there will be other things that will happen that will bring change to the world in a greater way. Now, it does not appear that he is a positive person at some times. However, he, is, he does speak his own truth in his own way, and he may be mi misinterpreted in some ways. I do not say that he's always correct, in how he speaks, but he is here to bring about change to your planet. Okay, so is it true that he's removing Cabal? Cabal are failing in their actions to succeed at some of their um, goals, and he is part of that reason, yes. Let's put it that way. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Can you also say, Elijah, that it's the it's not that Trump is good or bad, but he is definitely a catalyst of a shadow that's making people uh, be motivated to make change as well. That it's not that he is the savior of the world, but in some ways oh, no. he's the darkest part of the world, and he's showing he us is, our darkness that needs to be transformed. He is here to make people think, and thinking causes change. That is how I will put it. It is not negative or positive. It is about change that is inevitable. It is about what needs to happen in the future. And if someone doesn't uh, doesn't uh, put any catalyst out there for change, then it will stay the same. And he is that catalyst in some ways for some of these changes, not all of them. Right. Okay, thank you so much. I don't see any other questions. Not that that's good or bad. I'm not saying good or bad. Right. I'm just saying that it is what it is yes. and it must be done. Yes. Thank you. I don't see any other questions in the uh, in the chat. Very well. Then I shall move on and bring someone else through. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. What? I only said thank you for coming. Sorry. I, I jumped the gun. Oh, thank you. Blessings to all of you and take heed of what I say because I know some of you will disagree with, with the, what I say, but look into your hearts and know that you cannot translate until your missions are done, until your time on earth is really not any more precious to you. 
And so there are some that will fit this category and they must move into a place for, with no distraction, with no, um, with only God in their view. And then they will translate because the distractions of the third dimension and the worries of the third dimension will keep them right here if they are not totally focused on God and and uh, love and moving forward. But remember, if you have a mission, you will still be here. Much love. Much love. Thank you. We are raw ons. Welcome. What is your purpose for us? Well, the person that requested him or requested them, please go ahead and ask their question. Greetings. Thank you for Greetings. coming. Thank you for coming. Um, the reason or the purpose of my request is to, uh, if you can tell us what you, when you were on earth and your purpose and how it is, impacting today's evolution on the planet there was more than one reason for us to be with you on your planet back then one reason was for us to set up off world bases for communication and travel during war times in other places. We did not want to be involved with these particular negativities. And so we came to escape from them. Now, there are other reasons. Your planet was very much in need of our guidance in some places. So we were a very strong guidance into a positive thought process in many ways. You see what we have left behind, languages and uh, thought processes that are more advanced than your own. When looking back at these stone tablets with our messages, there are still things that are there that you have not been able to understand. And so therefore it has not been reported what we had to say. Do you understand this? Yes, I do. What um, other purposes did you see for us? We also were to bring information to the worlds around the Egyptian population to Machu Picchu and the Incans, the Gnostics and the Atlanteans as well. Even before your time, we became acquainted with the planet so that we may understand if we could be there in the right temperament to forward your people and not become a distraction or a negativity to the forward motion of that which was intact already. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. You were teachers and at one point you decided to leave the planet. Um, 
because you you as you said you were here a few times and what made you leave the planet what happened then what did humanity provoke for you for your departure it wasn't a provocation that made us leave but the fact that they were too involved in worshiping us and we saw that as a negativity they would not believe what we said to them that we were not gods, but they could only see the power that we yielded and could not hear what we had to say, but only could see the beyond, power beyond their own understanding. And therefore we were gods in their eyes. This provoked us, well, was the provocation, as you say, for us to leave, not that they were misguided we did put them in a proper perspective before we left and said that they must honor god as he is the one god and they called god raw because of us and raw was one of us and this collective is for his ongoing and we could see that without us, they would focus on a God being and be positive in their search for spirituality beyond that which we could bring to them at this time. So therefore, I do not know if I speak as properly as I should, but they were too involved in our personages as greater than themselves to hear and understand the true message of our arrival. So we had to go and let them discover the information that we had left on their own in some ways. Is it correct to say that they used your teachings and manipulated the information um, to create another form of teaching. Correct. But it will all come to naught because that which is incorrect will not play out for them. And that which is not true will resonate with those that have wisdom. We have loved this on the planet. Wisdom is something that can be found here. But not in great abundance at this time, but there are those that are still holding dear to spiritual concepts that will help their eyes to open and their energies be released by the truth. And if your energy is not released by the truth and you are stifled by information, move on. Yes. Are you working uh, directly right now with uh, humans to bring yes. about the great plan? The great plan has been altered many times. So do not be too set on the words that you hear now because they are sometimes misinterpreted but the great plan will come as it is opening and awakened. Your tablets are true. Have they been found? Not all. Will they? But there is reason for this. We have planned that these tablets not be found until they are able to be understood by your peoples. They will be uh, found at the appropriate times. There will be things that are released into the consciousness that will open the placings of the tablets and information that must be seen at the right time. This is part of the plan. Thank you. My last question, if I may. 
do you have a message for us right now? Please. Move forward in your light bodies and your light understandings to move forward to a greater understanding of the one God. Remember, he is the truth and will help you to understand your purpose and mission here. Align yourself with all the belief systems that worship the one true God, for they will bring you into your personal perception of the portion of God that he wants to expose to you. Not everyone will have the same light in their eyes as far as understanding, but they will have the same light in their eyes as far as truth. Remember, there is one truth, and the truth will shine through. There are many perceptions of that truth. Make sure that your perception follows your heart into the realm of Godhood. There are many rays of light that come from him. You cannot be in all of these rays of light, but each of you as individuals are a different ray that comes from him and must put the puzzle together as they are all parts of the truth. Does this make sense to you? Yes, very much so. Thank you so much for coming at this time. Is there any other questions? I don't see any unless there's some in your room. Is there any in the room from Jim? No? Will has a question? Exactly. We didn't hear what you say. What? We didn't hear what was said because you're so far from the mic. She asked, what is our purpose for right now? Is that correct? Yes. The reason why we have come today, our purpose for now, is to let you know that we do exist and that this information is for you and the time will come soon for revelations in many different spiritual realms to open and for enlightenment to come in different ways to those that need to speak their truth to the planet. Their truth will be heard by certain groups. As your 12 tribes of Israel, as your different Muslim and Buddhist sects, as your Catholics and Protestants, as your Confucian and Shaoisms, Shiites and many of the others. There are so many different kinds of thought processes that are similar yet different, and they will come into a unity of thought that has never happened before. They will understand one another in a way that they can unite and work together in some ways. This is advanced thinking from the one God, but he is separated all these different religions for a reason, so that they can, when they come together, unite in a way that brings freshness to the unity of the world and make it fresh and powerful and bright. Thank you. Will did have a question. Yeah, I was just making sure that Angie was heard. What? So, hoy, yahana, say. Yes, I got thoughts. Yep, yep, yara. Great gratitude to you for your kind words today. Shikohona, aha. This is our message. If there is no more questions, other truths will be spoken, I am sure. Thank you. I have any other more questions? Very well.
Much love and namaste. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Katya of the Tunes a Yak. From Dors, from the Vision, from the ancient times to the present, God remains the same yet changed. Love. Ah, we are El Yaha. Greetings. Greetings and welcome. We have just come to say that there are many on the earth at this time that are going through very much roughness and need healing. The earth energies are very disrupted and they must calm down after a while. But in the meantime, as you are suffering through this stage of disruption, we can come and help you to heal. Be with us, call on us, and we can be with you if you need us. There are those that are in dire situations, feeling very ill, and feeling very much that they are not able to be healed, but healing is available to them. Give us a chance and be patient with us as we are still relearning the human physical body, for it has changed a little in the last several hundred years. More information has come to light, and more information is still coming to light. We are here to help. We are the people that God has given um, access to the <laughs> physical body on this planet so that we may bring it into a positive identity with your missions and with the earth and with whatever testimony you want to bring out to the people around you so they may be enlightened about healing and about God's positivity. Is that understood? Yes. Excellent. There are many of you here that have spoken to us. There is even someone in this room that is being worked on by us more than one, more than one. And we will be successful. Thank Questions? You. Yes, um, whoever was it that requested the El Raha, can they please uh, ask their question and then we'll take the rest of the questions. My name is Raymond. Thank you for coming. You are welcome. It was necessary for us to be here to tell people who we are. Yes. Have my efforts helping you help this planet to heal? Any healing energy that is sent out by you helps the planet to heal. Uh, the same you. with anyone that has healing energy that sends it out to the world, that sends it out to the people of the world. It actually prepares them for greater healing that may come from us or other greater healing uh, modalities. Thank you for that. Yes. That is all. Okay, Christine has a question. Yes. Hello. Greetings and blessings, El Yaha. Greetings, um, Christine. I've asked your help um, several times, and it seems to be slow going on the arthritis in my hands. Yes. And I've asked um, to cur also. And um, as far as it's gotten is, I can bend my little finger but everything else doesn't want to bend so this is correct there there is calcification this has to be we have a certain way that we have to get rid of this calcification and now instead of bringing you to us we must develop a way to bring the healing to you and this is something that we have not worked on in the past several hundred years so the way of doing this has changed okay i was just worried i got forgotten in your no. busy life 
Not, not at all. All things will be dealt with. Thank you very much. Blessings to You're you. You're welcome. Okay, Ava. Uh, hi, I have a question. Chloe. Uh, yes. yes, Chloe, yes. It's, it's nice to meet you. Um, I've been experiencing a lot of physical pain for the past couple of years. Every day it changes and it's very hard to deal with. So I'm wondering uh, what's it from and can you please help? Yes, the earth energies are very disruptive, especially for fourth dimensional beings. You live much in the fourth dimensional uh, sometimes because you need to get away from third dimensional problems and third dimensional harshnesses. So you move yourself up away from it in other dimensions. This causes a, a lack of grounding at certain moments, which brings in unnecessary and painful energy. We will come to you and help you with this. We see, however, that it, it, it will be helped if you allow us to do so. Thank you. Are there any questions in your room? Ask if you're the other. Yes, Rishavani. Any questions here? No. No. There's they seem to be satiated. <laughs> you know, and on our, on our side as well. Mo moving along, then, there must be someone else that wants to speak. Thank you. Therefore, I will let them speak at this time. Love and blessings to you. Thank you for coming. Remember, we are here for to help and have helped in many ways. Sometimes it may seem slow on our behalf, but we are working from a distance. And this is more difficult, especially with the earth energies being as disrupted as they are. They will calm down and things will become easier for all those that are healing. But at this time, it is difficult to get purity through in some ways. But we will give our best to humanity. Thank you and much love to you. Namaste. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Grendel. Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. One moment. All right, let's get yeah. you cool, there, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. To all. There, there's. I just had a feeling somebody wanted to talk to me, so I came. Everybody uh, wants to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody wants to talk to Grendel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm going to try to keep the hand motions to a limited. Jim said it looks too weird when he watches it back. Uh, but, hey, I can't help it. This is who I am. <laughs> uh, so there. There. What questions do you have for me? Well, I do have one thing to say first. Okay. And that is El Yaha is really uh, working a lot with many people. And there is many things coming forth from them. Many good things. There's less pain and less uh, difficulties with many of the situations. <laughs> so they're doing a good, as good as, they, good as possible for right now. And I think with 
the uh, release of uh, more calming energies will even be much better. Yeah. Yeah. All Line, right, any questions? Well, this just to tell you, Liney said that your hands are making up for your lack of tail movement, so we understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She you don't want to see tail movement, believe me. We'd like me. to see yeah. it. But go ahead, Sher. Yeah, well, you might get slapped with it. I don't know. That might not feel so good. Okay. Uh, tail <laughs> movement can be dangerous. Tail movement, yeah. Okay. But anyway, oh, well, I'll try to keep it on Yeah. Hey, Grant. But it's all right. Grant, oh, yeah, Sheer, is that you? Yeah, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to ask if you've been filled on the, a certain test that maybe I should have. You yeah, I was have. looking at that, yeah. Can I see like it. Uh, well, um, you didn't get a hundred percent. Let's put it that way. No, I just need to pass. Uh, there's only a very small chance that I actually pass. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be sort of borderline at this point. It was a rough test, and it was in an area that you're not real adept in. So we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a government test. It's not. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, and a lot of it's yes. the math so, one, right? The math portion. So yeah, um, it's be bureaucracy. Yeah. If you can like move things along, uh, you know, fret on some officials and stuff like that. Yeah, the math portion is where there's quite some questions. So, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. But uh, hopefully <laughs> that you'll get through that. Yeah, and you will actually. I know you will. Yeah, but we'll uh, talk about that later. Yeah, I actually want to ask you, there's yeah. a lot of investi investigations are against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. there's, yep. kind of, there's recording on the the one, the special prosecutor, not, not special prosecutor, it's called something else, the one that's supposed to save the investigation are going to go to a trial or not, and yeah. they say that BB got his in, got him in his pocket and stuff like that. And there's a lot of stuff just going on, yeah. a lot of craziness. Be, you would be surprised how many nations are going through this kind of actions. The United States is going through this. Israel, uh, Syria. Egypt, in many, in some ways, in um, Pakistan, they're they're just uh, even in lower. I mean, even in the smaller ways, uh, Japan and China and Russia, uh, they're all going through all these interrogations, going through all kinds of uh, disruptive kind of activities in the governments. These there are financial reasons there are um reasons for this because they want different people in power and they're afraid that uh these what is going to happen in the near future that some of these leaders aren't strong enough to handle in the, the most appropriate ways so you're seeing all kinds of um questioning and interrogation around the world because even in um north korea they're questioning him as well uh he doesn't like that of course and he that's pretty kept pretty quiet and and because you don't hear anything out of there it's kept very much uh quiet what happens in that country but you'll find that there are those that are um rising up against him in, in some small ways that are um, very disruptive to him. And when he's disrupted, the whole government is disrupted. So um, you will find many things going on like that at this time. And it is because they see on the horizon a great shakeup of the world. I see. And... I don't know, many many people are still supporting him, even though he has like five uh, cases stacking up against him. Two of them are going to go yes. to trial. So easy. It is the same everywhere. There will be those that will be steadfast 
and loyal to those that are in office because they always believed in them, always. They were there at the beginning of their reign and they are not, they don't see where any of this could possibly be true. And so they just keep their loyalty and faith. It will happen with every single leader that's under fire. They will have their support groups. This makes it much harder for things to get done, but it is what it is. So yeah, yeah, there you have it. Uh, I see. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and as a person that works in the Israeli government, I can see even those people that are in uh, uh, middle management, middle government, have their supports, have their beliefs. Some are for him, some are against him, and they're having little arguments about that all the time. So because it is a way of disrupting everything at all levels. And, and um, that is what's happening on the earth. The earth is being disrupted in every level at some point. You may not feel that, you may not see that, but if you look carefully around the world, you'll see disruption at every level. Society, uh, early government, uh, um, local government, uh, state government, or uh, uh, even um, providential governments and uh, territorial governments, and then even at the higher levels, all things are being disrupted. Yeah. All right. You know, you guys aren't asking very many questions. Well, today. we have two more questions coming. I, I just wanted to make sure I didn't. Oh, all right. Before right, we right. Um, Ava yeah, and Liney. There's, there's like questions. Of, I can't even get them all in. But, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ava. Yeah. Hi, Grindel. Thank you so much for coming because I have oh. a. Um, Personal painful question, and uh, oh, I, oh, here we go. Um, there is some <laughs> disruption, like you're talking between me, me communicating with other people, and here I'm talking about light workers, which is especially painful for me. I always come from a place, positive place, when I'm trying to communicate, but somehow my words are misinterpreted as if I would be giving some negative message. Um, so is it my problem with communicating or is it some negative being between me and the world which changes? Well, listen I'm carefully. Whenever people talk, sometimes the listener is negative. Sometimes those that are listening are looking for the negative in what you say. They're not looking for the positive in what you say. They can twist what you say into meaning what they think they think they should be hearing from you because they think everybody has negativity in them and everybody is out to say something negative to them perhaps. Perhaps they have a very low self-esteem. However, be very careful like the tone of your voice as well, because I have a problem with that. I have a problem with saying things like, yeah, hello, you know, and they take that as negative, but I'm really saying hello. So, but it's, it's not perceived as really positive because I said, yeah, hello. And the tone of my voice was not correct in their, in their sight. So make sure, all of you, this is a good lesson for everyone, that when you're talking to people, you have a, a tone that is uh, sort of light in your voice. I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time sounding light. Yeah. I have a hard time with that. And people often misinterpret what I say. Well, screw you. So... If you don't interpret it right, then uh, I can't help it. But um, the thing is, I have to. I have to be careful. 
and so do you because you have a very serious face. They're looking at your facial expression. They're, they're not hearing what you say as much as your facial expression is very serious and maybe seem negative to them. Perhaps you might want to try to smile a little more when you're around people so that they are understanding that you are lighter, that you are not so serious. But you get, you are a serious person it, by and large. And when they look at you, that is the first thing they say. You have a beautiful face. However, it looks very serious. And if you say, hello, how are you? It sounds very serious. It does not sound light. So be careful. And plus the fact people are, there are those that are negative and look for negative messages. But when they see your face and it's not happy or your eyes are not shining, they can misinterpret what you say. Grindal, I'm also talking in writing when they don't see me and I'm writing to light workers. Yes. And so, well, let me put it this way. Text is difficult. Unless you're an expert at writing, which some of you are, some things in text can seem totally different than what you intentioned. You can say things in text that are very positive, but when they're reading them, they're going, why in the hell did they write that to me? That's so negative. That's awful. Oh, dear. Have you experienced? I'm sure others have experienced this. And you go, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. I meant it this way. And then you have to reword it and say it in a even lighter way or in a in a way that they understand it better. But text can, you, you see, they don't see your face. They don't hear the expression in your voice. When they're reading text, if they're a negative person, or if they are used to not getting positive feedback, they will take the most negative approach to what you is written. I remember this can cause so many problems. If you write something, it can be misinterpreted and, and you may not even know that they misinterpreted it. And, and that can be a problem in the world today because there's a lot of texting and there's a lot of people that are just insensitive about what they text. They may not mean anything bad by it, but they just text something that can be misinterpreted or seem negative. So be careful what you text. Look at it and read it a second time. If they don't know you very well, then be, be careful what you text. Yeah. And you can also say, I mean this in a very positive way, or this is a very... Uh, my thought process on uh, this is positive and then write something because that will change how they read it. You might have to preface what you write sometimes in order for them to understand that is a positive, uh, a lot of positive blurb instead of negativity uh, because there's so much negativity right now. It's, it's the, uh, it's the uh, theme of the day when people look at things, they, they, they look negative, negatively at it because that is the way the world is focused. Okay, thank you so much. Love. Much love to you. Um, Liney has a question. Liney. Hey. Hi, Gwendolyn. Yeah, hey. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, recently there was something weird going on. Um, uh, do you know um, Amazon Alexa? That what, thing. Yeah, say that again. Do you know Amazon Alexa? No, I don't. Who's uh, that? It's, it's yeah. Amazon. Amazon Alexa. Yeah. It's the it's the machine oh, that. Oh, oh yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're. I thought you were talking about a person. You're talking about <laughs> that little thing that sits on the table that says stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, recently, um, that last couple of days or, or this week, um, people have been saying that it's it was like laughing. 
for no reason and they're getting some strange things. Is that um, a problem in the programming or is it AI? No, actually, if you, um, if you're, um, if you understand how it is programmed, there is some laughter and some unusual responses programmed into it. Just like on your telephone, if you, if you have an iPhone or a phone that talks to you, those that have programmed these phones put some text and some answers in there that are not usual. Like if you tell Siri that he's stupid or something, he will say, that's not very nice. And uh, you would think that, you know, how did they program that in or why did they program that in? They just wanted to make you feel more trustworthy toward Siri, that he's a little bit more human, a little bit more, um, a little bit warmer than just a, uh, a voice. So uh, they have programmed some of these things into these electronics. So don't be um, outraged by the fact that Alexa might be laughing. That might be part of the programming. Exactly. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Did you hear? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The phone turned on when I spoke, and um, I didn't even say "Hey Siri" or anything. Uh, no, I just wondered Maybe. if it was um, something interfering. But that's something. Something that I said was programmed into the phone, and it reacted to it, which is very unusual because uh, I wasn't even aware that I said anything that it would react to. So there you have it. Um, just, it just might as well have been laughter. <laughs> uh, just one other thing. Um, but there's uh, people um, over the world that have been report that be re reporting um, some like lights in the distance, it's like distance. glowing lights, yeah. like, and orange. Um, even in the yeah. UK, do you know what, what that is? Yeah. They are ships. There's a lot of ships around the planet right now. A lot. And they're not allowed to come into the atmosphere. But those that you see, the, those that are colored and you can see, actually have come into the atmosphere and hit certain kinds of um, electromagnetic waves or something that make them appear. Now, not all fourth dimensional ships or fifth dimensional ships will become visible in the atmosphere, but some of them run into these fields and the resonance of the field along with the resonance of the ship, the vibration of the ship, if you will, frequency, whatever you want to call it, will cause some of them to be visible. They may not even be aware of it. Yeah. So, and, um, here they are. They're coming along. They don't even think anybody can see them, and they're zooming through. But, yes, they are, um, especially in the U.K. and uh, uh, Swiss, Swiss, Finland, Norway, uh, that those islands there to the north uh, of England, what are they called? There's an island section right in there that's very sparsely populated. What is that island section called? Hebrides. I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 very it's a home to many different alien bases because there's only like twelve people that live on the islands. You know, it's very very lightly uh, populated. There's not a lot of people there. Maybe a little a village here and there, but there's a lot of alien activity up in that direction below the Scandinavia and above England. Do you know where I mean? Yes, I do. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, Christine has a question. Christine. Has a question. Christine. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. Um, How are you doing? Um, I'm trucking along. Trucking along. There's a phrase I haven't heard since the 60s. All right, go ahead. Um, in my area, 
um, there's going up a lot of solar um, farms. Like, yes. Like crazy. Um, <laughs> and I just uh, purchased um, to have solar um, panels on my house. Um, yeah. Is this um, a good trend that's going on now? Because I, I'd hate to see all that land um, become filled with homes because there's a lot of ranches and farmland there. Yes, I would too. I understand what you're saying. Solar energy is good. It's not the most efficient way to do things yet because they don't know how to make it as efficient as it can be. But it is a good beginning. Uh, solar energy is free and it and it comes from the sun and they can transfer it into electrical energies and it can be very helpful. And it also, I don't know if they talk to you about this or not, but if you make, if you gather so much uh, solar energy, it can be stored for the future and it can be actually uh, used to uh, send back to the electric company so they can use it. They will buy that off of you to send back. Uh, if you send it back, if you have an excess, if, we, if you start running your house purely on solar energy, you can send the excess energy to them <coughs> and they will buy it for a yes, very I small price, of course, because you got a well, almost for free you had to buy the panels well i'm hoping to get it to supplement my social security so i see yeah i i don't trust stocks and bonds so instead i'm ah. investing in in so well, you see they'll be good up to a certain point and, and <coughs> people will uh will benefit from them for a good while but then after a point, they won't be any good anymore. But don't lose faith in them quite yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, I'll leave some money in there then. Yeah. Thank I need you. some water. Can someone help me? Yes. Can please someone take care of Jim? Yeah. Grendel's drinking Jim needs some water. water. He's starting. My voice gets on his nerves, I think, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Grindel. You're welcome. Is there any questions oh, in the room yeah, there right. with Grindel? What? I what? You... <laughs> we're, we're out of questions on our side. I was checking to see if there's any questions in the room there. Uh, I have one. Uh, there's another, there is one in the room. Okay. If, uh, if uh, she can get here. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Gimpy. Um, so when Liney was talking about the lights uh, the, um, that was in the sky, at times it would light up a, the whole horizon. Is that the, is that the ship that it was? Or is it multiple ships? One ship it's multiple it ships, yes. But it will tend to light up, light up the whole horizon if they uh, come into contact with the right uh, electromagnetic uh, pulses or if they come in contact with certain vibrational energies they will all become visible and bright lighten up your uh, horizon but it's not the mother ships will not come that close so it's not one ship it uh the mother ships will all be out in space pretty far away uh, they try not to get too close they um humans tend to be very threatened by uh a gigantic ships nearby so yes even the one out by jupiter the, the 26 foot long or 26 mile long um cylinder ship that's filled with water the uh, uh which i assume is the dolphin whale alliance that just stays there it doesn't move so i, I don't know if it's moved i haven't really looked but it was there for a while but um you know, they're just going, what is that? What is it doing there? Uh, the, they get all upset. So, because um, it, it it was in third dimension. So, uh, that's why it was more upsetting to them because it was easily seen. So the, the second part of my question is, there's been a lot of flashes and booms 
on a large level. Yeah, well, you're, the disruption of the energies on the Earth level has caused these kinds of things in the atmosphere. Uh, you, uh, they've also been reporting very unusual noises in certain places, uh, which is uh, different vibrations in the atmosphere because of these different, different kinds of energy disturbances and the way that the weather is moving and the, all these things put together cause some very unusual things on the planet. So do not be uh, really frightened by that. They're actually natural, even though they may not sound natural or, uh, or feel natural. Some of them are being um, are affected by the movement of the earth and these disruptive energies. And I, I know you know about the sounds, yes, those yes, weird yes. sounds. Yeah, the trumpet, the, like some, trumpet. yeah, and a trumpet sound and all these things. It's it just is what it is. Uh, and they can the atmosphere is creating these sounds. Now, some of them, these sounds may be helped be 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 helped by saucers and spaceships that are moving in their area, which are unnatural. So yes, but the atmosphere is just reacting to what these different vibrations and different frequencies. So, and different wind volumes and how how the wind has changed, how thunder has changed, how, uh, has anyone noticed that thunder has changed? That it sounds a little different in this day and age than it did 10 years ago. The thunder has changed sound. It's, it's actually seems closer. Right. Then when it's, when it's right over you, it's closer sounding. It seems like the clouds come closer to the ground when they make thunder sounds. And so many people are commenting on that throughout the world at one time. So yes, they're used to it now, but, Yes, there's different things going on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I have a couple questions from the YouTube chat, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Krelik uh, has a question about, he wants to know, and if you can inform us how zero-point energy works. Oh, uh, zero-point energy. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> I, it, I probably know it as something else. Can you describe what it is so that I can maybe uh, put my finger on my version of it? Okay, uh, Krelik, if you can type that in uh, in the chat and then let me go to the other because question. I, um, I really don't know what that is. That's fine. Um, and Rado wants to know uh, if you can ex talk about the market crash. Uh, you mean the one that's coming I or the one that just happened? Can you maybe address both and then we're covered? <laughs> All right. Well, there was a little bit of a market crash not too long ago, and it, it affected the world in a very slight way. You remember how the stocks were going up and up and up and up, and, and world stocks were also going up, and then all of a sudden they came back down. Uh, it really wasn't a crash. It was a really just a balancing out of Correction. all the uh, financial energies that were so it went way up but it came down and balanced out so it really wasn't a crash so much but some people reported it as a crash mm -hmm. uh it, it it but it really wasn't it was very mild it did affect the earth economy in some ways there's some people that did go completely broke and some people that uh made a fortune and stuff like that but it wasn't really a crash. So, but there is going to be an economic crash eventually. The reason is the earth is under huge economic strain everywhere. There are uh, Spain, Italy, um, Greece. Oh, these pla these uh, places are about ready to collapse. Some of them. Even China is cheaters back and forth, uh, collapse, not collapse. And, and eventually the weight of the 
uh, financial system will collapse because more money is owed. More money is owed than there really is in existence. There is that money in existence, but some of it is worthless. Some things like uh, certain dollar bills or the uh, here's a good example. Right now, the 10 trillion, no, the hundred trillion dollar bill from Zambia, the hundred trillion dollar bill from Zambia is worth 40 cents. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. What did I say? Zambia. Oh, it's Zimbabwe. That's right. It's worth 40 cents. Now, think about that. $10 trillion, $100 trillion bill worth 40 cents. That is amazing to me. What about to you? Doesn't that sound a little off? So this is the way the world is operating at this time. They have more money printed than there actually is. Otherwise, the $100 trillion bill would be worth $100 trillion. Correct? Yeah. All right. These are the kinds of things you're up against when you're looking at world fiduciary of, uh, systems. And you're going to see that they're going to collapse because they cannot hold themselves up. They cannot support themselves. When you have a $100 trillion bill, that's only worth 40 cents. So now... There are other things going to happen in the meantime. There, uh, Some of you know about the St. Germain Trust Fund, which will be opened eventually and give the world greater, uh, greater uh, money value. But that will not last long. As that money is dispersed, uh, uh, not long after that, there will be other events that will actually cause the the collapse of the 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 entire collapse will happen because everything will teeter off balance when that is released it won't take long for that to teeter everything off balance maybe 10 years or something but or or not even that long but it will help to unbalance the financial systems that the cabal have set up so accurately but they're they're struggling with it at this time yeah all right does that answer your question i, I could go so. into lots of detail about that because of course grindle knows about money so mm. <laughs> um, okay grindle um, like money grindle like money okay. yeah but i have to deal with it here on your planet as a walk-in uh, I have to deal with money and, and and you know what it's it's sort of fun because it's not my money so <laughs> I get to play with it but I uh, it's really not mine so okay just to clarify the question from Kralik, he, he he said that zero point energy is the anti gravity technology it's a series of spinning oh. to create levitation and he doesn't know so oh. much about it but he would like some more information. Oh, that's been around for centuries. Not not on your planet, but it's been around in the universe for centuries. How do you think they lifted some of those stones on the on the pyramids, or or, or in Machu Picchu, and or in the Puma Punka? How they lifted the uh, great, uh, gigantic, hundreds of thousands of pound stones into place into place. You. You're not going to get 10 guys that are going to do that. No, not even a hundred or not even a thousand, because how are you going to get a thousand guys around to do begin with? So it's just not practical. And they, in the pulley system. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Not for that weight. So yes, the anti-gravity has been around for a long time. I can't tell you how it works because in order to do that, I'd have to use equations and numbers that you wouldn't understand but um and 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 frankly i don't know all the numbers and fractions and all that i just know that it works and that it has been employed on this planet many times the anti-gravity will become part of your future there's no question 
that is on your planet already. It's been here for a while. It's just not talked about. It's not, um, <clears throat> they're still playing with it. It's like the uh, Hadron Collider. They've made a, a zillion discoveries there, but you don't hear about them all um, unless it's something that would benefit humanity. They've actually made some pretty big boo-boos there that if the humanity knew about what where they were, what kind of errors they made, they'd be scared shitless. Oh, am I allowed to say that? No. But anyway, um, <laughs> all right, they'd be scared. <laughs> Real bad. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Real bad scared. Yeah, Real bad they'd scared. Be, yeah, they'd be right up there. So oh. anyway, yeah, they're they're um they're messing with some pretty dangerous stuff really so i i i know that okay um liney has a question <laughs> yeah Liney, go for it liney are you there yeah, yeah. okay um I i'll ask her question for she asked first so i'll ask it uh, first and then i'll do barbara um she wanted to know if um oh there, she, there she's there go ahead Sorry, I'll just um, turn my. All right. Hello. Go. All right. Okay, I don't right, know what's happening. I, I don't know what's happening with her. Liney, no? Yeah. Okay, go I, ahead. So, sorry, I just stepped away from my um, laptop for a minute. Um, yeah, I wanted to know. Um, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I wanted to know. Um, there was something um, in Antarctica recently by the mountains, and um, somebody saying that it might have, something might have crash landed because it left some like trail marks. Is that is that anything? Well, well there's a there's a ship there already. Um, it is us uh, under underground and under ice. They they know it's there. They they know that it's there, and these are uh, beings that know it's there as well. They didn't actually crash, but it was a near crash. Uh, they got too close, and um, they almost crashed. But they did leave some marks on the side of the mountains, etc. But uh, it wasn't a crash uh, completely, and they were able to uh, return to the atmosphere. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Thank you for confirming that. All right. Very good. Yes. But that that was part of what's going on. There's so much going on in Antarctica. They're making discovery after discovery about world conditions, weather conditions. Um, the poles tell you a lot about what the planet was like uh, millions of years ago. And more recently, there's... Um, there's so much evidence of global warming and ice ages and things of this nature that they are they are amazed how much information they learn from Antarctica. Yeah. Plus, there's other stuff going on there. You would you don't even want to know. It's a mess. But anyway, go ahead. Is there any other questions? Um, we have a question that's actually uh, it's it's. For to Kerr, but um, maybe we should wait. To All right. Oh, we oh well. Kerr. Well, um, I'm not to Kerr. We know that. Not that pretty. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I might be able to answer it. Okay. Well, Barbara said that uh, two people uh, saw, both saw a ship a couple months ago, and she yeah. wanted to know who was who was the ship. Who was it? No. And that's all she well, said. What did it look Grindel, like? She said that Takur said two of the Hukalo people saw it. I think Takur probably would know the answer. Maybe not you. I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. So, man, maybe I can't answer that one. Did they, did she, but didn't you ask her about that before? I, I don't know. Um, maybe Barbara asked. Uh, Barbara, did you ask, did she tell you that it was reptilian? 
No. She's saying no. Okay. No, I, it wasn't. For it wasn't me. That, so. Yeah, it was Turker. We'll we'll ask if Turker comes. All right. Very yeah. good. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, it, is there any questions in your room? Because we're we're. Any uh, questions? If not, we'll bring to Kerr so she can answer that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Grendel. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get out of here. Hold on. Don't forget your tail. Have a good day. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You didn't serve any drinks, but eh. Well, you did get a drink. Just the water. <laughs> um, if, if maybe Jim needs some more water before Takur comes. Yeah. <clears throat> Greetings, I am Takur. Greetings. I heard you call for me. Is yeah. there a question? Yes, um, there's a question from Barbara about a, a ship that was seen by two different members of Hukalo, and she was inquiring as to who it was, if you if you know. And you I, would, what did the ship look like? She didn't say, but she said that you had said uh, at oh. the time that uh, it was seen by two different members, but... That's all the information I have. I'll just let her type if she can respond quickly. It, this was, <clears throat> I know which ship they speak of. This was the Octorian ship that had the uh, medical group in. There's a medical group of Octorians that travel around. They they don't always interact, but they are uh, they're very curious about uh, new medical discoveries on your planet. And so they do... Uh, read some of the databases about medical information, and so yes, they're one of the one of the ships that uh, are seen quite frequently. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions in the room for Takur uh, in your room, Takur? I do not know any questions in here for me. Thank you for your time yesterday. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. She just said thank you for your time yesterday, and that that was good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. But, uh, um, it looks like Christine. Christine, do you have a question? Yes, I do, Tricker. Um, I was wondering, um, are they um, going to have a world... Um, a world meeting or anything with any of the leaders? Yes, it has been postponed several times now because yeah. of the condition of the world and the threats being made one to another in private and in public. So therefore, um, it has been pushed back to June at this point. Well, at least it's still there. <laughs> yes, we. It, it's well overdue, however. Uh, but it'll be the around the middle part of june that is when they're shooting for there is no specific date um there are certain ones that were invited to the last council that will not be invited to this one which is unfortunate but um they just cannot be in the same room together at this point so um it is interesting that this kind of uh, council would have those kinds of problems, but it is what it is. If we um, send um, energy towards um, just the idea of the council getting together, would that be sufficient to help um, the energy that's around there? Everything will help. I do not know if it will be sufficient enough. But if, it, if enough of you send the energy, it will definitely help. Okay. Absolutely. Do not be um, prayer and thanksgiving and uh, prayers for this kind of thing are all are very helpful. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mark, are you are you was your question the same as what Christine was asking? Well, similar. I, I'm just okay, please go ahead. 
so general updates as to what's happening with Kirk Fickner and Hukalo. Uh, any progress on um, addressing uh, astral memories for visitors uh, visiting the colonies, et cetera, and other new uh, technologies or members in the Kirk Fickner Alliance? That, that project was put on hold for a little while because Earth energies are not uh, conducive to this kind of uh, technology. And they did develop something, but they can't test it really until the energies go down a little bit. But something has been developed. Um, they're still working on other things that might improve even on that development and that technology. But um, at this point, we're waiting for some uh, time to do some experimentation, and that has not been given to us yet. So. Um, after we learn <clears throat> how successful this first one uh, that we put into uh, uh, into reality is, then we can test the next one. And See if it's even better. Lovely. But updating the colonies, people are still coming and going as per usual. Some, are, of course, are remembering. Some are not. Uh, for the most part, those that remember are get, their memories are getting better, and for and for those that have no memory, they are still this, have no memory. So we are not sure what part of the mind that is actually triggering the subconscious to be uh, aware in some people and not in others. So we are trying to do that when whenever we do have those people that are here that can remember, we do some studies on their brain mapping to see what has been activated that uh, the other ones have not had activated. But at this point, it would appear that the same activations that are causing people to understand and see things and bring things back are activated in those that do not bring things back as well. So it is a little bit of a mystery. Indeed. Um, and just anything general in terms of um, galactic support for Kirk Fickner's goals? We are in alliance with many. Of course, being in alliance with many is a good thing. But remember this, everyone has a different idea of how to do things. And so that is where we all differ is how to do things we want to we want to interact and be positive and do what is right for the planet however we have different ideas on what that is and how to do it many disagree with the fact that we help with the weather and disagree that we help with uh, tectonic and volcanic they think that's too interactive however it does not um change the thought processes of the people. It does not interact with politics. It does not do any of the things that are against the rules, but it does help humanity, a, a more of humanity survive. And so they're saying we shouldn't do that because perhaps some of these people that we're causing or helping to survive should not survive. But I cannot see that um, as a problem but some of them do. So you see, it is all in the way that you look at things. It's all in the way that you interact. Many will just send thought processes to humanity or men. Some will just send messages such as I'm giving right now through channeling or psychic abilities to earth and not do anything else. Some will send representation with permission from the galactic government to the political governments just to tell them uh, some they they are actually told what they are allowed to say to the governments to not be too interactive but only give them an idea what is possible for them if they accept first contact now that can be extremely vague in some situations and there are those um, 
communication barriers that do, do cause problems. So there are many things that we deal with out here that you may not even think about. Well, thank you very much for that information and all that you do. Thank you. We are doing our best. <laughs> thank you, Takur. Um, Slava has a question. He's saying, hello, Takur. I would like to ask if it does not violate any rules, if it's possible to establish communication with our children and their parents, at least through text messages. It seems quite possible for both sides. Perhaps we could create a mailbox for communication with children in this way. We could be more in touch with the children and their parents. Thank you. At, at this point, th that has been discussed. Um, several things have been discussed with uh, uh, communication with hybrid children. Right now, astral visitation is the only thing that has been really approved and in both directions. They can come astrally to you and you can go astrally to them, but there has been nothing solid in uh, third dimension that has been improved. There's been much discussion of it, and the reason why it hasn't been approved is, it, is that your governments say that it is too much evidence that uh, we exist, and they do not want humans to have that much evidence about it. And, and it's the same with having us come to the planet. That's too much evidence because people will actually see um, in third dimension that we are here. They can, now, if people say, I've seen the holograms, or I've seen astral projections, that can be explained away as something else. And your governments would do that very easily. But to have someone appear and have you take a picture of them or whatever, that's much harder to uh, explain away. And so they're, they're very cautious about what kind of evidence is uh, presented of, their, of our existence because they do not want people to know uh, definitively that we are here. Of course, they see the ships, they take the pictures, but many times they'll say, that was our government, or that was so-and-so's government sending out some uh, ships that were experimental or whatever. They can tell many stories about things in the sky that you don't know anything about. But if somebody were to be standing beside you and they could take a picture or they could start seeing that text was appearing from nowhere and talking about hybrid children, that would be quite a bit of evidence uh, against their theory that there is no aliens. Remember, even the little, even those things that could only be marginal sometimes in their, in uh, uh, proving that we exist, they still are very frightened of. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's a question uh, from Sheer and then Ava. Very good. Uh, hey, Tikur, how are you? I am well. You and how are you? I'm very well. You said something, I kind of missed it, something about June and two parties don't, don't want to be in the same room together. What did you meant? Oh, there are certain political groups, countries, that are uh, standing up against one another and will not be at, if one is there, the other one will not be at those galactic meetings because they are in odds against one another. They're at odds against one another, and they do not want to be in the same room together, and they do not want to come to the galactic meetings because they have too much on their plate on their own in their own country's agenda or whatever. So it is sometimes very difficult to have these meetings at this juncture in your time space. I have a question. Yeah. Let's say some of them don't want to speak with one another or be in the same room. Why can't you just uh, tell them we are going to be on that date in that place? If you're not going to be there, you won't, you will not have the 
vote right and maybe we're going to give certain uh, things to those who are going to show up and show us a good faith and yeah. you will miss it well this is true we've already given that information to them some of them say we're small countries we don't make a difference anyway it's always the big countries that make the decisions and are in control of everything even though we do take a vote of all the countries for certain things they still feel un appreciated and not valuable so we try to give them as much value as possible but it is true that some of the larger nations will have more control or be or be listened to by more more countries than smaller nations so the more obvious question will be why not get you know china india Russia and the US, Britain, just get them in, in a room, tell them, well, what do you need we have, to have first contact? How can we help you help the humanity? In the early days, that is what happened. Only the major countries were involved. However, it seemed unfair that that would be the case. And so we brought in the other countries. Now, the thing is, the those big countries also suggested that we bring in the smaller countries because they want their uh, support. They want the support of these other countries, and so they want us to bring in these other places. Um, and because they say these countries will support us, these countries may not. So let's bring in as many countries as possible because we can win over some of these other places to our side are thinking. And besides, some of the larger countries have very similar thoughts on um, first contact anyway. So they want to be, they want to establish a world thought process about it. So bringing in these other countries makes sense to them so that they can actually <clears throat> propagandize in some way what the world to their point of view i see so why not divide the groups to two or three or four take the we, one that have a positive do. outcome and adopt them yes we do what your people you you see the your earth actually organizes how they want this to play out we allow that because we are not allowed to stop them in any way from organizing the way they want to we make suggestions but they are they fall on deaf ears many times but you have to understand they have free will and we allow them since we are not to uh physically interfere with them they we allow them to set up the parameters and they do the thinking and we then come and present our cases and thought processes, but they organize how the how it's to be heard and seen. And so we cannot do much about that. I see, so is there going to be some kind of a meeting in June? Yes, uh, so far in the middle of June is when it's supposed to happen. Okay, well, I will look forward for, for that meeting and hopefully I will have uh, my speech that will help them come around. Well, there are many of you that are going to speak again, and this time there's only there's going to be even more humans involved than before. So that is good. There are much more, many more volunteers than there were before, and that is a good thing. Thank you. Um, we we are right at the top of the hour. Do you we have do you have time for one more or two more questions? Yes. Okay. Ava has a question. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your work in helping this planet. My daughter Chloe has a question. Yes. Hi, Takur. I just have one question. It's mostly about my future. So um, I've wanted to become a Bavarian and um, I'm not ready to become one yet. But I was wondering if it would be beneficial for me to become one in the future and if I could support and have children while being a Bavarian in the future. It is possible to have children when you're a Breatharian. However, 
Becoming a Bavarian takes time and energy to, to transform your body and mind and spirit into that thought process because it is a thought process as well as a body, mind, and spiritual change. So it takes some time. It is worthy of the challenge if you can do it. There are many species that have gone through this change, but the earth and the humans are not set up to do it as easily as some of the other uh, species that have gone through much evolution and have become less physical in some ways. And um, humans are fully physical at this time. So it is difficult. Some can do it and some cannot. If you find yourself challenged by it in a way that is too difficult, then I would let it go. You can be very successful as a human without being a breatharian and reach many high goals without it. However, it is a, a wonderful accomplishment if you could do it. Do you think I could do it? I do not know your physiology as well as you do, perhaps. I could check you out at some later time, but uh, right now I do not know. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Marlene has a question. Yes. Hello, Ticker. Uh, my question is, in, uh, is concerning SpaceX and Elon Musk. Um, who, on whose behalf is he working? And is it for an AI purpose that he's been sending cars and satellites and all the rest? Please. Well, there. I think that he has more than one purpose. I think that one purpose is to send his agenda to the earth. Uh, another is to um, win over thought processes uh, for this kind of agenda and to be a sort of a spiritual leader but yet not in the sense that he is a god he 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 is perceived as a great a great leader a great and some look at him as a god as well but he just really does not want that uh to be the case in all places but he does have an agenda for the earth to and he believes enlighten them, those that will be looking at God in a certain facet that only he can see him. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it's a very complex answer, I know. But I cannot really tell you. He is a very interesting in, uh, entity and has a more than one agenda. Let me put it that way. Well, that's why I asked the question <laughs> in that regard. Yes. I understand it's a little, it may be a little difficult for you to answer directly. Um, yes, because there are some things that I could say that I don't want to say because it would be a judgment. And I don't want to do that because I, I want to avoid that. But I do see that there are negatives and positives on the way that he is handling this and i do and i want you to stay in the more positive side of his understanding and more positive realm of his thought process does that make sense to you yes absolutely thank you and so i cannot really answer it because i do not know his mind but i see that his agendas have changed a little bit over time and this uh, concerns me a little bit. He's walked out on quite a few um, groups that he yes. used to take part in and yes. um, for reasons related to what you're talking about right now, of course. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That concerns me that he would not be inclusive. Well, if some consider you as a god, maybe that's one of the reasons. <laughs> Correct. Thank you very much, Dicker. I, I think can, this is, there were other reasons other than that that he left those groups. And yes. one of the reasons for one of the groups was he was not 
considered godly enough. So that concerns me. Well, thank you. I, um, uh, your information is very important for all of us to hear at this particular time, at, uh, on, on these timelines. <laughs> thank yes, you. Yes, it's, it's, it's very confusing. And the answer to that question, I'm sure, came as a, a little bit of a muddle. However, I think what I said was very accurate. Again, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess this can be the last question. Um, it's regarding the upcoming meeting with Trump and Kim Jong-un that Trump spontaneously accepted an offer that none of his administration even expected, nor was it planned. It was just um, offered by the uh, the leader of South Korea, and he said, sure, go out and inform the press corps. And, and, and everyone was quite in shock. And now there's going to be this very historic meeting between Kim Jong-un and, and Trump, and he'll be the first president to meet with him. Uh, even Clinton um, declined a meeting from his father um, back, in, back in that time period. So the question is, is there any work that you all are doing on the denuclearization of North Korea behind the scenes that may have influenced the choice for this meeting? We do not work in that way. <clears throat> We do not uh, physically denuclearize or change the way that people, uh, governments think or act. Our, our only physical interactions with the earth are seismic, volcanic, and axis, and weather, and things of that nature. But we will not denuclearize any place, nor will we give any suggestions about uh, pro or con in that way. We are not to be governmental or political in any way. Right. We can't whisper in your ear some what we think is the right thing to do. We can give some suggestions through some telepathic thought processes, but that is the most uh, significant thing we can do to uh, denuclearize. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're um, welcome. We um, we've we've come to the end, so we're really out of time. Suddenly, unlike in the very beginning, there's a million million questions, but they'll just have to wait till the next time. So interesting. <laughs> when I come, there's a million questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're very popular. but bless you all, and I'm sorry that I cannot answer all your questions. Mm -hmm. I would love to, but we're out of time, and um. Talk to me in the astral, and I will answer many of them. Perfectly. Okay, and, and for the, those of you that didn't get your questions answered this time, um, just next week, uh, Takar will be, or I will, Jim will be back, and hopefully Takar. I will be back Takar. next week if so you we'll want me to. So we'll those questions up again. Very good. Thank you, and much love to you, Takar. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Much love. Many blessings to all of you and peace on earth. Hello? Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Hiya. Welcome back. There was a lot of people here today. Yes. We had you were you were your body was quite the revolving door of of energies today. I guess so. <laughs> yes, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is there any closing blessings? Is there anyone who would like to do a blessing either in the Jim's room or our room? If not, I'll do yes. one. Oh, you want to do what? Come. Ray will do one. Perfect, Ray. Great. Go for it. Go for it, Ray. Look not to the future, for it is here with you. Be in love and know that you are loved. Protection will come to those who ask for it. So ask and you shall receive. Amen. 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 Wow, that's really 
Short but very powerful. Yes. That was very powerful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, remember, that is true. Many of you have great protection around you and use it, ask for it. When you don't feel it, you can just call on it. And you are protected because you do have your missions to do. You do have your light to hold. And God will be with you and true to you. And be true to him as well. So have a wonderful day. Thank you. Yes. She must have blessed. Oh, you wanted a blessing? Oh, Angie has another blessing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Can't bend down. Okay. Ati awani asa tutu asa sa inani asha shua atata ayake e asu ni ya ani ya wasa si asha shini akana na ya. Be true to yourself and move forward in the truth of God as he is part of who you are in the sense that he has created the soul that is you. Be part of his divine wish and his divine uniqueness. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, well, Have a wonderful day. Yes. And everyone, this has been the Saturday Human Colony uh, webinar with Jim Charles. Just to remind you that if you would like to be in the room to be able to ask questions at this paid webinar, you can become a member of hucalo.org. Uh, you just go to hucalo.org and it's $10 a month and you can always be in the room when we are doing the live webinar. Also, April 7th and 8th, we have a class being taught by Takur called Galactic Reiki. You can sign up for that on the website of hucolo.org forward slash events, and you can sign up there. It's $100 for six hours of classes. This time, the time frame will be there. Very convenient for our Australian friends and evening time for American friends and the European friends. You're just going to have to wait or get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, the, we love and you anyway. the middle of the night for Europe. So, right. and um, Europe and Asia. <clears throat> well, not not all of Asia, but yeah. Well, we'll Middle we'll East. we'll sit this one out, and then we'll get you the next time around. But everyone, Europe and Middle East, it will be, and Africa will be. It will not be able to <laughs> easily partake. Right. So you'll be back next week, and then uh, yeah. yeah, we'll we'll see you next week then. All right, very good, and um, have a wonderful week, everyone. I hope it, I'm sorry not all your questions got answered, but uh, well, blessings asked to save them for next week. So we'll pick it up next okay. week. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Very good. Much love, everyone. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.